Hey everyone, my name is Maricela Gonzalez Lariniga, and my research paper was on how social stigma of exonerated individuals influences the compensations available. The Central Park jogger case was at the forefront of national media attention while I was growing up. Aside from the absolute heinous nature of the crime, the tender ages of the alleged perpetrators proved to be equally shocking. Five teenagers ranging in ages of 14 to 16 years old were charged and ultimately convicted of the rape and assault of a 28-year-old investment banker. As a result of their convictions, the teenagers dubbed the Central Park Five were sentenced to terms ranging from five to 15 years in either a juvenile detention center or state prison. In 2002, the Central Park Five were legally exonerated and cleared from any involvement in this tragic case after the true perpetrator, Matias Reyes, confessed. The exoneration of the Central Park Five piqued my interest in law and inspired me to pursue my bachelor's in legal studies with a minor in psychology. This case also caused me to think more deeply about wrongful convictions and other instances where, when our criminal justice system misses the mark and how that can be adequately remedied. More specifically, I thought about what type of compensations are available for these exonerees and how negative social stigma influences that. Scholarly research revealed that social stigma plays a bigger role in exoneree compensations than many people realize. In doing so, the stigmatization of exonerees creates a barrier for their successful reintegration. Dr. Jeffrey Kukuka, an expert in post-exoneration adjustment, and his colleagues found that exonerees face employment discrimination at the same rate as actual offenders. However, exonerees do not receive the same post-release services that the offenders have at their disposal. Similarly, Leslie Zanella, Kimberly Clough, and, and their colleagues found that both exonerees and ex-offenders experience housing discrimination at the same rate and are less likely to receive a response from a potential landlord than the general public. Again, in this case, offenders have access to housing assistance programs that exonerees don't qualify for. Legal scholars and social psychologists have found that social stigma has, has a significant impact on things like the amount of money awarded in damages, the social support programs available, and the public's willingness to support these social programs. Even compensation statutes are found to perpetuate the negative social stigma of exonerees by barring those who falsely confess or contribute to their convictions from filing a lawsuit. The, the method I chose to use was content analysis. I believe this method would best convey the emotional and psychological toll that social stigma has on exonerees. For this section, the content anal analyzed consisted of personal narratives obtained through articles, documentaries, radio interviews, and lectures. I exhaustively reviewed the transcripts for Mark Shand, Jeffrey Deskovic, Michael Anthony Williams, Gregory Counts, Calvin C. Johnson, and Marvin Reeves. Six exonerated individuals who together served a total of 130 years in prison for crimes they did not commit. The purpose of analyzing this data is to determine if the exonerees themselves viewed social stigma as having the same degree of influence on their difficulties with reintegration as the literature review indicated. Through the analysis technique of coding, I discovered that from the exonerees perspective, the three aspects that are deemed most difficult while reintegrating are mental illness, lack of access to social support programs that are granted to ex-offenders, and the time they lost and how that strained their familial relationships. The limitations in my research included the time constraint in searching for personal narratives and the lack of attention placed specifically on the aspect of exoneree reintegration. It simply isn't being spoken about enough. The discussion surrounding my findings and that of the literature review is a matter of academics versus experience. My research confirmed some findings presented in the literature review, however, differences were also detected. These differences do not, in my opinion, indicate a lack of merit on behalf of either the researchers or exonerees. I believe that the discrepancies represent discussions on the same issue being viewed through different lenses. Many of the researchers involved are approaching the topic from an outside perspective, while those exonerees are looking at obstacles in reintegration through a much more intimate lens. An interesting connection I noticed in my research was how both Mark Shand and Calvin Johnson, through their experience, 
confirmed the findings of Kukuka, Applegarth, and Mello as it relates to the effectiveness of policies such as ban the box in reducing discrimination and prejudice. Both Mr. Shand and Mr. Johnson were able to secure a job in housing, respectively, and after in-person interactions resulted in a more positive impression of the exoneree and a greater, a greater willingness to help the exoneree. In conclusion, I submit the topic of social stigma as it relates to exoneree reintegration is one that deserves as much attention and further research as possible. I believe that combining scholarly research with firsthand accounts from exonerees would be effective in revealing areas of weaknesses in our current policies that fail to assist exonerees in ways that they need it most. As the number of wrongful conviction cases increases, it's important that the conversations surrounding adequate compensations to facilitate successful reentry keeps pace. Understanding that the stigmatization of exonerees is rooted in fear and lack of genuine understanding for their experience, it stands to reason that an important way to reverse the stigma would be to educate ourselves and those around us through communication and interaction. This responsibility should not be left to just lawmakers and scholars, and most importantly, not to the exonerees themselves. As members of society, we all possess the power to evoke real change for those that who have been unjustly incarcerated.